Hello, everyone, and welcome to Ron Stodd Rise Smart's Career Podcast, helping you transform your everyday work life into an exciting and rewarding career. I'm your host, Kimberly Schneiderman. With 10 plus years experience in coaching, writing, and training, I'm passionate about delivering ideas, insights, tools, and resources to people like you, people focused on achieving their career goals. Together, we'll explore how you can identify your career passions, set your career goals, and achieve everything you work toward in your career. Our experts are career industry practitioners with deep experience in HR and corporate leadership. They are seasoned coaches in the area of career growth, workplace communications, succeeding in a current role, enhancing work satisfaction, managing priorities and stressors, building a personal brand, and strengthening valuable internal networks. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to this podcast and share it with your colleagues. You can also follow me at KJ Schneiderman on Twitter or on YouTube on the Rise Smart Career channel. Better yet, sign up for coaching services on the Ronstad Rise Smart portal so that you can benefit from everything we talk about. Now, on with the show. Welcome, everyone, to today's episode, Strengthening Your Internal Network. Today, we are meeting Laura Olert. Laura is a coach with Rise Smart's Work Life Coaching Program, in addition to serving as a team manager for our international coaching teams. Laura possesses 20 years of experience in corporate HR and career development management. She coaches professionals at the beginnings of their careers all the way up to senior executives considering encore careers. That experience, combined with a master's in organizational development, a bachelor's in management and human resources, and a certification in retirement options and planning, contributes to her ability to empower professionals through both the tactical and strategic aspects of their careers. Laura, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Kimberly. Thank you for being here. And so today we're talking about strengthening one's internal network. I'm excited to dig into this topic because as career professionals, we often talk about networking during times of job search or transition. So it's going to be interesting to hear about networking for purposes of internal growth. All right, let's get started. Laura, welcome, and thank you for being here. Can you tell us a little bit about what we should be considering when we think about strengthening our internal networks? Why would we do this? Yeah, sure. And actually, yeah, this comes up a lot in my coaching as I'm working with people and they want to explore other things within the organization. They're like, how do I do this? And that's what internal networking is about and creating your visibility. And there's a number of reasons why you would want to do it. One is... Maybe you're looking for something different within the organization. Not sure what that is. How do you figure that out? By talking to people. So that's one big way that a lot of people are interested in exploring and talking to people. Another might be, hey, you know, I love my job, but I want to take on some bigger projects or expand a little bit some of my skill set. I don't know. Where are those? Where do those projects ex- exist? Uh, again, advancement, right? We, a lot of us looking to move up in our careers and broaden our careers. Where, you know, who do I talk to about that? How do I get people to know what my value is when I'm, you know, what I do every day? And that goes from meeting people and talking to them and maybe even being able to show you value in a way of what you're a subject matter expert in within your organization. Who knows about that besides maybe your immediate team? So a lot of reasons why you would want to get out there and talk to people and really get people to understand what you do and what your value is. So what does it mean to network internally? Like, how do you know who the right people are or how would you target somebody and, you know, just approach that conversation? Give us some ideas on that. Yeah. So that's where um, I think the coaching comes in that's super valuable is That's where I start with my clients, right? So first let's talk about the reason you're looking for the visibility or to network internally. Um, And now who are those people? So it's first based on the reason, let's brainstorm and think about who are those people that you know of uh, that you can start with and start to explore there. Um, And the way you do it is a lot of different ways, right? It's Uh, virtual conversations like we're having today, just hopping on a Zoom call and and chatting with somebody. If you have the opportunity to go into your office, meet up with people for maybe a quick coffee. Uh, If there's happy hours that are happening, uh, attend those. 
Uh, but starting with a list, and even if it's a very small list, you want to start with a list of people that you think might be the right starting point. And then you, you know, there's lots of opportunity to expand and build from there. Okay. So I'm busy at work, Laura. <laughs> yes. Are and, you? <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> and, and while I might want some juicier assignments or I might have an idea I'd like to pitch, I don't know when I'm going to find the time to mm -hmm. like to start doing this magical internal networking. Yes. <laughs> Talk to yes. me about that. And that sounds like a very familiar statement I hear from many, many of my clients. And it's true, right? We, we have our work life of what we need to get done in our jobs day to day. And we have our families and whatever else is going on in our lives. How do I have time to do this as well? Um, so First is really thinking about, you know, once you get to the why, right, hey, then it becomes more important, right? I understand why I want to do this and why it's important to me. Now let's get to the how, how we're going to do it. So I really work with participants, I think less is more with my clients, right? A lot of times they have big aspirations of going out there, I'm going to meet with five people a week and I'm really, you know, going to go all in. Um, and then you don't want to set yourself up to fail, right? So I'm much more, let's start with a little bit less. Maybe it's one person a week. Uh, do you have an hour in your week that you can literally schedule it in your calendar? I think that's a big piece of success. If it's only even 30 minutes, whatever that time frame is that you think you can give, let's schedule it. When is it? Is it on a Friday? Is it on a Monday? Let's put it in your calendar. And then the next step is, what are you doing with that 30 minutes or that hour? Are you brainstorming who you need to talk to? Are you actually picking up the phone and calling people? What do you want to achieve in that time that you have to commit? And I'm big with setting goals, like quantitative goals. I'm going to email three people. I'm going to call two people. Uh, then when you finish that 30 minutes, that hour, whatever the time it is you had to commit, you feel that success. Like, oh, wow, I really did something. Uh, and then maybe we can build on that the next week. Maybe you'll have an hour and a half the following week. And maybe the week after that, you have no time. But it's kind of staying committed to what makes sense for you and really seeing the achievements from that. So it's not also just, all right, I'm going to carve out an hour. You have to know what you're going to do with that hour so that you feel that success and that you're moving the needle forward. I like that. And as I'm as I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about this half hour to hour that I might spend this week doing some internal networking, I'm also wondering, is my manager going to be on board with this? Like, right. what do I need to do to make sure things are good from that perspective? Yes, very good question and very important step in this whole process. So that's really the starting point, you know, so I work with my clients, it's, you know, we can coach, come up with plans, set goals, that's great, but you need to have your manager on board, right, it's supporting you and feeling that, you know, this is also, this is valuable. So that is something else I work with, with my clients on how to have that conversation with your manager. Uh, and it is a conversation and you want to make sure you have time carved out, schedule the time just for this, right? Because we know how you have that one-on-one -on -one, and I'll just add it on to the one-on-one -on -one and, you, and then it doesn't happen, right? right? Schedule time, even if it's 10, 15 minutes to say, hey, this is what I'm thinking about. This is why I'm looking to expand my network, get more visibility in, in the organization. This is the time commitment I'm thinking it might take me at least to start. And I would love your support or love your thoughts on moving forward with this. Uh, my experience is that managers are very supportive. Uh, you know, as long as you can still say, yeah, I'm, believe me, I'm going to get done when I need to get done in the day. This is on me, but I want you to know that this is something that's important to me and would like your support. That's all you're asking for uh, at that point. That's great. We talked at the beginning, we use this phrase, increasing your visibility. What, what does that mean to somebody? What would they be doing? What's included in that? Give me some examples. Yeah. So um, actually, I have a story that oh, I could share that yes, I think please. would be a great example of, of, of all the pieces that we were just been talking about. So I recently was just working with a uh, work-life coaching client, Julia, uh, who had been at the organization for 10 years in a marketing role, 
loved her role, very happy, but was starting to think about, you know what, I think I can do more than what I'm doing. Yes, I'm happy and love coming to work every day, but I feel like there's more in me to do. So we started working together, first thinking about what is that? Is it still within marketing? Is it something totally different? And she determined it's marketing. I love marketing. I want to stay there, but I know there's other types of roles out there and I just don't know what they're all about. So we started off with the, you know, what the more would look like. Mm -hmm. She had a meeting with her manager and expressed just that, like, hey, I've been here a long time. I think there's more I can do. And her manager was 100% on board, totally agreed with her and said, you know, go for it. So she, but first didn't really know, you know, she, no clue what, what she wanted to do with this. So she had a couple of key people we brainstormed. She had a list of like three to five people that she came up with that she said, you know, I think that they'd be open to networking with me, talking with me. So she started with the ones that were comfortable for her, which I think that's a a great tactic, right? So this isn't easy for everybody to do. So don't start with somebody that might be the most challenging. <laughs> start with someone right. that you're like, you know what? I, I know them pretty well, I'm comfortable with them. And then add, the more you do, the easier it gets like anything else in life, right? So that's what she did. She started with this short list, three, four people that she felt very comfortable reaching out to. And of course, they were very open to talking to her and having conversations. So that was the first step. What was nice, what was happening pretty quickly for her was they were offering up saying, you know what, you really should also talk to and would give her like two or three more names, right? So now your network starts to mushroom out and that's exactly what you want. She was like textbook with her network. She was great. So they were very open, open with their time and also open with making introductions to other people for her. So that was going really well. She still was like, I'm kind of understanding what they're doing, but still not totally getting what, where maybe I want to go. So we talked about actually shadowing some of these people in these uh -huh. roles to really be day in a life. Like, what is it that you're really doing, right? It's one thing to hear about. It, it's another to start to experience it. So she started to join some meetings. She was shadowing people for maybe a few hours a day. Again, this was obviously a conversation she had to have with her manager because that yeah. was a bigger time commitment. But again, manager was great, supportive of her growth. And she was really then getting into the depths of understanding what these people did and where she would want to target herself. So that um, really was, that was probably the key for her for really understanding, wow, this is what, this excites me. Like I spent some time and I'm feeling so energized and excited. And then that's where she was able to kind of target, start to meet more people and look for opportunities. So as we were finishing up, there were a couple opportunities that were opening up that she was beginning to interview for. And the other nice thing was she was number one on the list to be on the interview slate because they start, they knew her already. Right. So that's also where you see that success, right? It's not, okay, we need to post this job and who knows? They were like, we've talked to Julia. We like her. Let's make sure she's on the candidate slate. So she was right on the slate to get started. That's great. And that's a good story. And I like what you said about the fact that they got to know her. And even though she didn't start with this idea of, I want to interview for a new job, I'm going to really target this. It was all about gaining an understanding of the different directions she could take her career and gaining an understanding of what's out there and right. where she right. could do things, which led to stronger relationships because of that, those internal meetings and that outreach that she had. Yes. That's great. Yeah. I, I would love to dig into two points that you talked about. Uh, the First, the shadowing. Can, mm -hmm. can we revisit that? What does it mean to shadow somebody in a job when you're not an intern, uh, you, right. know that, you know, you've been in your role as your client was Julia for 10 years. How does, how did she physically shadow? What did it look like? And what did it mean in, on a typical day? Yeah. So, man, this was virtual too. Um, yeah. you know, their, their company, they are still all working virtually. So one was sit in on a couple of our client meetings. So she sat in on client meetings I mean, this is how open they were, which was amazing. Um, and then there were some reports that, that these individuals were working on and they were sharing their screen, kind of going through the reports, what they did. 
because that she was more of an in an analyst role. So they were showing her that analytical side of what their role was about. Uh, I think what really excited her was those client meetings, though, where she could see how they were, how they went. I think she was always a little intimidated, like, oh, I don't know if I could be client facing. Uh -huh. uh, and that's what she wanted to explore a little bit more. Love the analytical, super big strength of hers. So by sitting in on those client meetings, I think it gave her the confidence to say, you know what, I think I can do that. You know, it's kind of the unknown, right? So thinking going into it, it's, well, I don't know if I can do that, right? I've been an analyst all these years. How could I be client facing? Uh, and of course, she wouldn't be in a role that she would do that day one, but just being able to sit in and see how it went, what happened, she the skills that she picked up from that and what she learned gave her the confidence to say, you know what, I think I could do that. Yes, I need training and I would be developing and ramping up to that, but I think I could do it. And I think I would love doing it. So that's, I think was now, not everybody is as open. I, I realize that, that shadowing can sometimes be a challenge to make happen. But in this case, she was able to find a couple of people that were very open to just bringing her into the fold. And here's the other thing, she's internal already, right? You're not bringing somebody from outside the organization in on this. She's an internal employee. So that's the other benefit, I think, to being able to move around internally. You're already a known quantity. They they knew her value. She was very valuable to the organization. And that, I think, helped with people being open to having her do this. And it also sounds like it wasn't that much of a lift on the other people's part. I mean, they were inviting her right. to, a, to sit in on a meeting and they sent her reports or g gave her materials for things that they were working on. Not necessarily right. huge time consuming actions on their part, which makes it easier for them to say yes. Yes, exactly. And what, what was nice with Julia was somebody offered it. She didn't even think about it at first. And somebody offered it to her like, hey, maybe you want a shadow. That was such a good experience. And it gave her the confidence in other networking situations to actually ask for it. You know, if you don't ask, you don't get, right? Right. So most of the time... But it didn't really occur to her in the beginning, but then somebody was nice enough to offer it. And then she was like, you know, I'm going to ask for it again. And she was able to do it in a few situations. It was nice. Sounds great. So we've yeah. talked about visibility or internally networking so that to raise your visibility in terms of maybe shifting positions in the organization, uh, proposing and getting some juicier projects, whatever that means to an individual uh, getting advancement or bigger roles over a long run, uh, becoming more of an expert, I guess, is another area mm -hmm. where you can increase your uh, your expertise and your visibility through internal networking. Those are all great ideas. Laura, if, if you had to give people four actions to do today to think about, what would they be? Okay, great. So I think first is setting those goals and intentions, right? Why do I want to do this? Um, and how much time can I commit to doing this? Um, and that goes back to, you know, the why, which is, do I just want more visibility? Do I want a new role? Really thinking that through. Second would be talking to your manager, right? You don't want to talk to your manager first. You want to know your why, and you want to be able to share your how you're going to do it with your manager. So your manager doesn't say, well, that's great, but we're really busy right now. You know, can't do it. Well, this is what I'm thinking, right? I'm going to commit one hour a week. So after you set your goals and intentions, then schedule a dedicated call or meeting with your manager just to discuss this, right? So that you have that committed time with them. And it's super important to have their buy-in and their support before you move ahead. Plan your calendar. Okay, so I got the commitment. I know my why, I know my how. When am I doing this? All right, Fridays tend to be a little bit of a quieter day for me. I can carve out an hour in the morning and then literally put it on your calendar and decide what you're going to do with that hour. And then creating that networking list is big. When, so if in that planning time, you want to know who you want to reach out to and why you want to reach out to them. And then I think what's really key and important to success is having an accountability partner. So if you have a coach, like when I was working with Julia, I was her accountability partner through the, every step. Uh, if you don't have a coach, maybe you have a mentor, a colleague that you trust that you feel you can bounce things off of, or a friend, uh, anybody to be able to say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. Kind of like, let's, let's spitball this a little bit. What am I missing? What do I need to be prepared for? 
that's really helpful. So you don't feel like you're doing it alone. And then it's just doing it. Then you're just getting out there and doing it. (laughs) Got it. You got to do it, right? Right. Right. So, all right. So the four actions, setting your goals, naming your why, uh, talking to your manager, getting their buy-in, and I guess having a plan together when you talk to that manager as well, not just in their in that meeting, all enthusiastic about what you want, but you a solid action plan, the return on investment for the organization or the company probably be included in there, what it's going to bring to them. Yes. Definitely. And then planning your calendar, planning your actions and getting your accountability partner. I like all of that. That's great. Laura, what else would you like to uh, say to our listeners today before I ask you our final question? Just that I think there's no substitute to networking, gaining visibility. And I think it's scary for a lot of people to think about doing it. I don't want to bother people. Everyone's busy. We have a million reasons why we may shy away from doing it. But most people, the majority of people that I work with and that go through this process, people are very happy to be helpful, offer their expertise and talk to you. So just have confidence that, you know, Yes, people want to be helpful. They want to um, share what they know and be able to help you and start with who's easiest. I think that's another really big final tip is start with who's most comfortable to, for you and then work your way to maybe some more challenging networking conversations. That sounds great. Laura, I think I'll be setting up an internal networking meeting with you soon to talk about some ideas that I have. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and our final question today, Laura, Laura, what's a book that you're recommending and why? So I have two that are uh, like my favorites that I recommend all the time. So the first one is the 20 minute networking meeting uh, uh, by um, Marsha Ballinger and Nathan Press. Awesome, tactical, really to the point on how to have a powerful networking meeting. And the second one is Super Connector by Scott Gerber and Ryan Fogg. That that also is more behind the scenes of why it's so important to be connected, stay connected and build your connections. That's great. Laura, thank you. And in fact, Nathan Perez will be a guest on an upcoming episode of this podcast. Oh, so that's we great. Yeah, we're going to learn some of those tactical suggestions from him on how to actually do the networking once you've figured out the why and the time for it. So Laura, thank you so much for your, your time today, for your expertise today. I really liked what I heard about increasing my visibility at work and helping myself get exposed to new opportunities within an organization. So thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, And thank you to Laura for helping us understand internal networking today. If you would like to learn more or connect with Laura, you can find her on LinkedIn. Just search for Laura Oler, O-L-E-R-T. She is also one of our work-life coaching coaches and can be found in the coaching profiles on the Rise Smart portal. Everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you for the next episode. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Ronstadt Rise Smart Career Podcast, helping you transform your everyday work life into an exciting and rewarding career. I thank our expert today and encourage you to tune in for our next episode where we continue talking about how you can identify your career passions, set your career goals, and achieve everything you want to work toward in your career. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to this podcast and share it with your colleagues. You can also follow me at KJ Schneiderman, that's K-J-S-C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R-M-A-N on Twitter or on YouTube on the Rise Smart Career channel. You can also sign up for coaching services on the Ronstadt Rise Smart portal so you can directly benefit from everything we talk about.